Welcome back to the show. Our first guest is Gary Hill, the executive director of the Metropolitan Business Citizens Association and co-founder and president of the Schultz Hill Foundation. Gary, welcome to the show. Hey, Michael, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you so much for coming on out here. Listen, that's a mouthful, so we're gonna say MBCA. That's right. Is that okay? So Gary, uh, we go back a little ways, get to know each other, Atlantic City, and what you've done for the city and your foundation is beyond, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But let's let the viewers know a little bit about yourself and, and how did you wind up here in Atlanta City? <laughs> yeah, but that's a good that's a good story. You're right. Um, I'm here 32 years now in Atlantic City. I have a master's degree in education. I graduated from Kutztown University in Pennsylvania, but I decided to kind of. Z- go away from that a little bit and do some marketing and some business work. So I came to Atlantic City and I started to work in the club business and I did public relations, press, private parties. And so that got me set for my real job, which is executive director of the MBCA, because that includes organizing, marketing, publicity, raising money. So all of my past experiences, I think, kind of gave me to my, my job that I'm doing now and getting paid for. So, and that's, uh, I've seen this guy at work, folks. Listen, it's like no other. But now, this is a little off script now because you said the clubs and stuff like that. Loved it. Listen, I'm 57. I'm dating myself, folks. But as a 20-year-old, 30-year-old, even a 40 or whatnot, some of those clubs that you and yeah. John, you guys ran, yeah. were incredible. Yeah. If you don't mind, just touch on some of them because we have time for just, sure. you don't have to go in depth. A lot, lot of history with that. Yeah, oh my right. gosh. We um, owned, operated, and um, really kind of made an impact on Atlantic City's footprint in the entertainment business for many right. years. We had a um, bar called the Brass Rail on Mount Vernon Avenue, Atlantic City. Studio Six, which was a nightclub. It used to be called a disco, right. now it's a nightclub. Yeah. And we also on one of the biggest um, clubs called Club True on Mount Vernon, where it kind of put a little bit of everything together to make a great nightlife experience. We were one of the first clubs in the city of Atlantic City that stayed open into the wee hours of the morning, called the After Club. And um, very successful, lots of fun, lots of work. Uh, We employed almost 100 people at that time. A lot of construction, a lot of projects, a lot of great people. We did a lot of charity work in the clubs. We did a lot of fundraising in the clubs but we also had a lot of fun. And it was a good way to earn a living and to kind of make a a footprint in the entertainment business in Atlantic City. Pre-casino clubs. Pre-casino. Pre-casino clubs. That's what I was gonna say because, uh, again, I remember going as a, a, in my teens, when I restarted, things were a little different back then. And then into my 20s, the clubs were phenomenal. Lots of fun. People from all over, I could say the country. I mean, because Atlantic City is one of those 25 to 30 million a year come to visit. So, but our nightlife was like no other in that little 48 blocks. Would you agree? Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, our motto was, um, our club was where entertainers are entertained. And we would have all the entertainers from the clubs and from the casinos at that time, when they would be done with their shows at two o'clock in the morning, Mm -hmm. one o'clock in the morning, they could come to us because we had the after hours club. Take a little page from Kentucky and the Curb, the 500 club, and then I see folks taking a page from you guys when you see boogie nights and whatnot, what they do. So folks, that'll be another show for another (laughs) time. We're gonna talk about that because we had a ball on those. Tell us about the MBCA cause and effect, Gary, what, the, what it serves. Well, it's interesting because the MBCA started as the Midtown Business and Citizens Association because it was, it was formed in the Midtown area of Atlantic City, which was called the Dead Zone. Now, I'm lucky to say, we have something called the Orange Loop in the Midtown area. And the Orange Loop is just amazing. And, and the, the two developers that are there um, are, are, are just energetic. They have great vision. They invest a lot of money. So in a way, we started to highlight the Midtown area. And now, 30 some years later, we have a very active Midtown area called the Orange Loop. There was one business that still is there in the Orange Loop or in the Midtown, which was, of course, the famous Irish pub. Mm. And Mrs. Burke, the owner, gave our organization the very first $1,000 to start 
the organization because she believed in our mission and our goals. And our mission and goals was just to make a better living environment, a better neighborhood, better uh, business environment for people. And um, we had residents that joined us that lived on Ocean Avenue, New York Avenue. We had some businesses, as I mentioned, only 17 at first. We had uh, the Irish Pub and Mamba Mott's restaurant right, wow. and the uh, PNC, which was commerce, it's PNC now, but it was Commerce Bank. Right, right. And the first casino was Sands Casino that joined us, but we were in Midtown area. And eventually we started getting a very good reputation. We'd have, oh, city leaders come in and we wanted a voice. We wanted a stronger voice from our Midtown area. So as we grew in popularity and membership a little bit, this person would bring somebody, that person would bring somebody. And we were only like 20 people, 25 people, right. a little luncheon maybe. And we grew and grew. And the very first gentleman from outside the Midtown was a name that's probably well known in this area, Mr. Mac Latz of the Knife and Fork. And if anybody knew Mr. Latz, he did not mince words. And he wanted to make sure our organization expanded outside of the Midtown because he was very impressed on what was happening in our organization. And we were getting some things done where he felt other people didn't. So he asked to join us and he brought some other business people from outside the Midtown area, the owner of Doc's, uh, right. Doc's Oyster House and some Fair others. Way. And so they decided they wanted to join and they'd bring other people. So we had to come up with a decision, our board, very small board at that time. Well, we can't call it Midtown if we're going to be down in Lower Chelsea and down over in Venice Park and right. so forth. So we changed the name to Metropolitan because that's a all encompassing. <laughs> right. Because our organization, Michael, as you know, you're a member as a resident. Right. So we include residents. We include nonprofits. We have 60, 65 nonprofits that belong, which we help support and promote. We have small businesses like Chester's Flowers, like Docks, like um, the Bungalow, okay? Right. Then we have large businesses like South Jersey Industries, Atlanta Care, ACE, uh, and of course all our casinos. So we have an organization that is all encompassing. It's a metro, that's what brings a community together, right. we believe. It. It's not just one segment of a community. It's all the pieces of the community that makes the puzzle complete. And then we hope to have a positive effect as an organization in our community, if it's through business development, if it's through promotion, if it's through charity work, scholarships, which we do, and that makes our organization one of the strongest, I believe, and obviously one of the oldest. We just celebrated 31 years just right. recently, and um, it, it's, a, it's a good group. It's a good civic business organization. It's a fantastic group, and I'm so happy to be part of it. We got about a minute left, unfortunately. We could go for an hour. We just had a, an event, over 800 people. Mm -hmm. You have one coming up in January. Yeah. It's an Earth annual Puppet. event that we sponsor for over 30 years. It's the state of the city of Atlantic City, and the mayor, whoever the mayor is, right. does the state of the city um, and gives a, a format of what's coming up in the new year, plans, progress, problems, um, and it's great to see. It's gonna be at Caesars. It's gonna be January 12th. We have a very special guest, our Lieutenant Governor of New Jersey, Ms. Sheila Oliver, will be there again giving opening remarks by the state. And we'll have Mayor Marty Small Sr. as, of course, our mayor right now, giving the state of the city. So we invite everybody to come out and see what's going on in 23 in AC. That's right, folks. Listen, it's going to be an unbelievable year. We got some to go yet, but what you folks do at the NBCA and Schultz Hill is phenomenal. And I appreciate being part of it and being friends with you, John, and some of the other board members and whatnot. It's opened my eyes to Atlantic City in a different way. And we're definitely going to have you back. We have to. This is way too short. Gary, thank you, thank you so much Thanks. for coming out. Folks, stay right where you're at. We'll be right back. <laughs>